uh, if you look at two different complex signs, you see they have different colors, and you have to be able to argue why the color is different. Uh, the color of transition metals depends on the, the split between the d orbitals, how high that split is. Uh, one uh, variable that affects that is the identity of the metal itself. If you look at cobalt uh, versus nickel versus copper, you see they have different colors. And if the ligands is water, which was this case when I made them, uh, the identity of the metal is making that difference in color because the difference between the orbital is changing according to that. Another variable is the oxidation number of the central element. If we give you Fe2 plus versus Fe3 plus, one is light green and the other one is uh, red. And the question is why? The answer is uh, do their electron configuration versus number of protons. And you see in the case of the red, this has higher nuclear charge. You have more protons versus electrons and that's why you are held to the nucleus, uh, higher nuclear charge held to the nucleus much more tightly and there is more energy needed in order to make that electron transition between the two d orbitals. So identity of the metal, the oxidation number of the central elements, uh, those are two. The last one is the most important. It's uh, known as uh, the spectrochemical series. If you change the identity of the ligand, the color immediately changes. And we usually give you this uh, uh, spectrum in terms of iodide being the least effective. It does the least splitting. And carbon monoxide and cyanide, they do the most splitting of the orbitals. So iodide ion causes the smallest, uh, CO largest splitting. Uh, it also sometimes known as weak field splitting for iodide which uh, then the less energy of the white light is absorbed and the more energy of white light is going to be reflected. So that's why if I take copper uh, and change the ligand of uh, water with chloride, then I will get a greenish yellow. And if I swap H2O with ammonia, I will get a purplish uh, indigo color. So the ligands definitely have effect on your color. Uh, this is due to charge density. As you go across from iodide to carbon monoxide, charge density increases. The more charge density you have, the bigger impact you have on the splitting of the d orbitals. Let's look at another example. Uh, in case of cobalt, if you look at cobalt 3 plus, it's argon. 3, uh, uh, 4s is lost, uh, 3d6. Uh, now, if, if I mix it with fluoride, which is the low uh, splitting effect, it absorbs a red light of 700 nanometers and it will give you green. So this is cobalt mixed with 6-fluoride. Uh, it has a weak field splitting and you will see it as green because it has absorbed the red. Now, if you swap the ligands with cyanide in ter terms of uh, cobalt 3 plus, it's going to absorb uh, ultraviolet 310 nanometers because it causes the biggest splitting. Delta E splits apart uh, between the two d orbitals a lot. Uh, ultraviolet is, is needed to promote these electrons up there. And what you see is pale yellow. So depending on what you borrow, and what you borrow depends on the delta E uh, split or the amount of delta E uh, difference. This also becomes uh, important in terms of uh, magnetic properties. Soon I'm, we are going to look at it, and in a case like this that you have a large splitting, the electrons stay down here as paired electrons when they're not excited. And this is a case that is not magnetic, known as diamagnetic. And when the split uh, is small enough, the electrons prefer to also stay as uh, sing singly into orbitals, and that produces paramagnetism. So it reinforces the magnetic property. So charge density and swap of uh, ligands are very important. And the bigger the split, the bigger energy of white light is absorbed and a smaller portion of complementary color comes to you.